I request the audience to put their cameras on. Can you hear me? Yeah, hi, hi. Hi, Paul, how are you doing? I am doing very well. Um, it's it. really an honor to be here and uh, supporting what you're doing, which is uh, a great work, very great work. Thank so you. it's a big honor for me. Thank you. It's actually our honor and privilege to have Mr. Wagon Paul Manning. Uh, from the time I came on social media, that was somewhere in 2001 or something. And uh, I had asked, uh, 2001, I was working with uh, Sri K. M. Rao, sir, for a television show. And at that time, uh, our plan was to have a panel of astrologers worldwide. It was an international show. So a panel of astrologers. And at that time, uh, he had suggested Mr. Paul Manley's. Uh, sir, sorry, sir, sir, sorry to interrupt you. Sunil, sir, can you just uh, start the cloud recording? I have already started it. So it is not showing in uh, my this one, sir. Okay, now. Okay, sir. Yes, now it's starting. Okay, great. Thank you, sir. All right. All right. Uh, I'll start again. Uh, uh, it's an absolute privilege to have uh, Wagon Paul Manley on with us. Very, very experienced astrologer, and uh, as I was saying earlier, you know, in two thousand one, I was when I was doing. When I was working for ZTV International, and at that time I was the producer. So uh, at that time, Sri Kiran Rao sir had suggested uh, Manly's, uh, Paul Manley's name to be on the panel. And uh, incidentally, somehow uh, at that time I could not do that show and the show never took off. But anyway, well, how long have you been into astrology? Could you say it again? How long have you been into astrology? Oh, it's very muff very muffled. It's a little bit hard to yeah, make. He's it asking up. you, sir, how long have you been in astrology? So Neelji, there's some problem with your mic. Uh, no, I'm gonna change my laptop after this. I'm, I'm gonna change my laptop after this. Yeah, I've been uh studying astrology since 1992. Uh and yeah, so since January of 1992. 31 years or more, something. <laughs> what took you so long to write this book? Gosh, I, I still can't Is hear it? Sunil. I'm so sorry. Sunil, there's some problem with your mic. Uh, maybe you have to reduce the mic volume. Uh, it's coming too loud. Uh, it's uh, sort of uh, it, vibrating. The sound maybe, is turning. Is it better now? Uh, slightly. If you can maybe take the mic a little away, it might help. So, how do I it? Oh, it's a mic volume on the computer. Okay, I can do that. One second. Now better? Yeah, a little better, sir. A little better, sir. More better? Yes, yes. Yes. All right. I I think uh, the only book I know, Paul, uh, you can hold up in Hawaii, one corner of the world, of course, the most beautiful corner. You know, so... You written this book on birth time rectification. People have not attempted it so far. So, what took you so long to write this book? I'm so sorry, Sunil. I want you, to hear every uh, word. Every word you say is is important. So he's to me, asking I'm not you. It. So he's asking you uh, that you have written the book on birth time rectification. What took you so yes. long to write it? Because it's something that everyone's looking out for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's um, a good question. You know, it's, um, I was fortunate uh, in the first year and a half of studying Jyotish uh, to meet Can Rao. Um, I was living in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and uh, starting my master's degree in counseling psychology. And, uh, and David Frawley lived there, and he called me up and he said, uh, I want you to come over to my house. There's an astrologer you would like to meet. And that's what that's when I met Kian Rao at David Foley's house. And uh, <clears throat> that began my journey uh, of 
of going deeper into astrology, into the use particularly of the divisional charts. And as I learned more about how to use the divisional charts uh, through his influence, um, through his teachings, I naturally got interested in birth time rectification. And so it's been a, a topic of interest for a very long time. And uh, so why now? What took me so long um, to get to your question? Uh, you know, I, I learned uh, by watching Kay and Rao how to adjust the birth time using the divisional charts. And frankly, in, a, in my naivety, I assumed other people were doing this. Uh, you know, astrology can be a very isolated practice. Um, uh, and, and then I realized, no, uh, people are really in the dark. One woman called me up uh, um, maybe five years ago, something like this. And she said, uh, you know, I'm at the, I'm at the, the ACFA conference in Sedona. And uh, every class, people are asking about birth time rectification. I mean, no matter what the topic of the lecture was, everybody is asking about it. And uh, she said, you do this, right? And I said, yeah. And I said, uh, she said, you should be here. And so that it was that kind of experience that was starting to build about five years ago. Uh, and, and then I started to write the book. Uh, and... Uh, it was actually right before the pandemic, I guess. It was more like three years ago, four, three or four years ago that this happened. And um, and so I had talked with Dennis Harness, who uh, was um, the organizer of the ACFA conference. And, and um, you know, I was, I was billed to uh, teach the following year. But then that was 2020. That was a pandemic. So it never happened. Uh, and so I... I just decided, okay, during the pandemic, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna write. Um, I love to write, and so I came out with a book. It came out last year. Uh, this is a copy. Of what it looks like: uh, birth time rectification, uh, <clears throat> how to use the divisional charts to find your exact birth time, and uh, <clears throat> it was it was one of the most rewarding things that I've done in all of my time. Uh, uh, studying astrology, practicing astrology, uh, because uh, I, uh, I realized that this is really uh, a, 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 a little understood, a little, little talked about, not many books have written, not many classes are taught, uh, and there's no clear method. And, um, and, and yet, Ken Rao showed me how uh, how you can have a clear method, how how it can be done, uh, and so I'm going to share my screen. Is everybody here? Can they hear me? Yes. Sir. <laughs> okay. Yes, so I can hear. A little history. A little history. Um, so it was during the time um, with uh, at David Frawley's house. Um, Ken Rao was there. I I in my enthusiasm um, said. Sir, I really want to study with you. And he said, uh, I, I go, uh, where are you going next? And uh, he, go, he said, to Houston. And I blurted out, my dad lives in Houston. And he smiled and said, well, why don't you come along? You can be my assistant and, and uh, enter in the data. And, and if the client's willing, then you can sit in on uh, the readings. And so... Uh, it was during the reading that my dad was having with Ken Rao that uh, I learned how he uh, how he adjusts the birth time and what is the methodology. Uh, so it was very uh, it was very revealing. I felt like I had a front row seat at um, the the uh, the this special event and. Um, so I witnessed, I witnessed that, and let me just share my screen. Um, this became a topic of discussion. Let's see, okay, first, so bear with me. I've never done this before, and 
in terms so there's of, a green button on the bottom of the screen share screen yeah yes i can do i can do that but i want to share a different screen okay so then view settings no okay go here go so there you go okay all right so what are you seeing right now anything you're seeing you can uh, see the slides sir. every book Okay. Like Perfect. Every bird time must prove itself. Yes. So here's a picture, 1993, with Can Rao, and this is my dad. So it was during this time that, uh, you know, when I entered the birth data, I said to Can Rao, um, "Sir, his birth time is rounded to 10 a.m. That's all he has," um, and he and he he thought nothing of it, but I was really anxious about what uh, what he could do at a 10 a.m. birth time. I mean, that sounds extremely rounded and general, but he didn't, he wasn't phased at all. He was, he could handle any kind of uh, birth time problem. And so I, um, I witnessed him looking at events. Can you see a chart now? Can uh, you no, see chart? Uh, no, no so you'll have to change the okay share All right. screen. let me do this yes next yes. to the share screen there's a small little arrow gotcha yes okay so here's the chart of my dad can you see this now yes sir okay <clears throat> so he began talking with him about events in his life and he often says, every chart must prove itself in the cold light of events. Every chart must prove itself in the cold light of events. And, and so he says, if, if there's a birth time problem, then collect uh, events in various um, common events that people have, education, uh, marriage, childbirth, career, uh, moving. So common events. And, and so he works, he worked from common events. And this is how he started the session with my dad, is that he didn't ask him for the date of events, not, not initially. He predicted what happened with him. And uh, and then and and sometimes he would ask. So he said, um, were you, did you get engaged in 1955? And, um, and the person, uh, and my dad said, yeah, uh, that was exactly right. And then he asked for the date of marriage and, uh, and he adjusted the birth time. What he was looking at was the D9 chart and he adjusted the birth time uh, by a couple minutes, by three minutes. I saw him change it to uh, 9.57. Um, so <clears throat> if you look at this, his birth time changed to 9.56. With this 10 a.m. birth time, he has Virgo Ascendant at 27 degrees. Now, here's the thing. The gauge that you can work from with astrology is the, the title bar, it's right there on the title bar of the Navamsha. Can you see that? It says 957 and 16 seconds to 1014 and 26 seconds or 28 seconds. Um, so this is the gauge. This tells us if, if this makes sense, if he was born at 10 a.m., then the Navamsha should be able to explain that event of marriage. And if it can't, then that makes the, the ascendant in the Navamsha suspicious. It, it's suspect. So, so that was that's where he that's what he worked from is looking at these events. So he moved the birth time back. And so let's do that and see the magic that happens. So I'm changing the birth time to 9.56. 
957 would work too. Do people see what happened? The ascent, look at the ascendant in the Navamsha. See how it changes from Virgo to Leo. Ah, major, major shift. I mean, of course, it's not a major shift in the natal chart. It doesn't, his ascendant was not that close to the cusp for these three minutes, going back three minutes uh, to make a difference. But look what happens. So he was born, he was married in Moon Rahu Dashan. So just, just focus on the first two <clears throat> Dashas. <clears throat> this this uh, event of marriage, by golly, it should make sense in the Navamsha. It should, you don't even have to go to the third level. Uh, you can go to the third level, I mean, to refine it even further. But the Mahadasha and Antardasha should, should uh, be explainable. And not only in the natal chart. I mean, we can't stop with just the natal chart. We need to go deeper. In fact, Kendra has a quote. He says, Jyotish is a blunt tool without the use of the divisional charts. Jyotish is a blunt tool without the use of the divisional charts. So he, he was showing me how he uses the first part of a reading to verify the birth time. Every birth time must prove itself in the cold light of events. So it's very practical event-based method of, of uh, verifying or rectifying the birth time. So getting back to this adjustment of, of four minutes, three minutes, uh, and then that arriving at Leo Ascendant, see what happens. Now, all of a sudden, Moon is in the Ascendant in the Navamsha. Oh, moon's in the Ascendant in the Navamsha. The Mahadasha Lord is in the Ascendant. If it's in the ascendant of a divisional chart, if the Mahadasha Lord is in the ascendant of any divisional chart, it can rec represent a significant event in that area of life. <clears throat> uh, in addition, uh, in the Navamsha, it aspects the relevant house. The relevant house is the seventh house for marriage. So two very strong, you could say, clues that this could be the correct birth time, uh, the, or the birth time range, shall we say, between 940 and 8 seconds till 957 and 16 seconds. Good evidence, good reason to believe that that could be correct. So, okay, so that's the Mahadasha Lord uh, giving strong evidence. Uh, we can almost hang our hat on that, but let's check the the uh, Subdasha Lord, the Antardasha Lord. Notice how Saturn aspects Rahu, the only planet that aspects Rahu. Saturn, with this change from Virgo to Leo, Saturn becomes all of a sudden the seventh Lord, the relevant house Lord. Now, the moon is not only in the, in the relevant house for um the event, which is marriage, so in the first house, but it aspects to the the uh, so it aspects the seventh house, the relevant house for that event within the Navamsha. So Moon is giving two strong clues now. With Rahu being aspected by Saturn, the seventh Lord, we have we have three strong clues suggesting that this is correct. Does everybody see that? I mean, if you go back to Virgo Ascendant, now Saturn, uh, now the moon has absolutely no connection with seventh house, seventh Lord in the Navamsha chart. None. Saturn, likewise, Saturn's aspect onto Rahu is no longer an aspect of the seventh Lord. It's the fifth Lord, sixth Lord. In the Navamsha chart, that's not a recipe for for uh, marriage. Okay, so this this kind of blew my mind. This this was the kind of thing that I was witnessing. Um, <clears throat> you know, first of all, I should just back up and say, 
uh, let's go back to um, Now, what are you seeing on the screen now? Let me see the slide. Oh, the slide. Okay. All right. Uh, so if we go back to um, the event of meeting Kay around in the first place, um, you know, at that time, you know, I'd studied really full time uh, uh, for a year and a half after I got my first Vedic astrology reading. Um, I was hooked and um, I was in a transition professionally um, sh shifting from being a school teacher. My mom just passed away. I was taking care of family business uh, for quite some time. And I had my first Vedic astrology reading and then living in the Bay area at that time, uh, I started taking classes, three classes at once uh, with three different teachers. I was so, uh, I was so interested in this. Um, but every class that I took before meeting Kay Rao, uh, and every person that I'd studied with, because I went to India for seven months in the fall of 1992. Uh, I studied with Arsantanam in New Delhi, other uh, astrologers throughout India. Um, and no one really emphasized the divisional charts. And it was when I, when I, uh, was sitting there looking at Ken Rao's computer and I was seeing how he set up his screen, just simply in a very practical sense. It was full of divisional charts. And I was like, oh, finally, someone who really works with these divisional charts. Um, not that people don't now. I mean, I think a lot of people do. Uh, but at that time, 93, um, he had just come out. When he first came to the United States, he came out with um, his book on childbirth. Um, planets and children. And he said something very bold in there, uh, in that book. He said, um, to the effect, it's ludicrous to, uh, to try to predict childbirth without looking at the septumsa, the D7. And he used the example of the great B.V. Raman. And so now, let's take a look at that. So look at the point that he was making, how important the divisional charts are and how, okay, I'm gonna share the screen again and we're gonna to go to, we could go through all the events of my dad's chart, but I think this will be, uh, this will be useful. Okay. So <clears throat> this is Bivi Raman's chart with uh, 742, p.m. and 44 seconds as his birth time in Bangalore. Now, the interesting thing about uh, about B.V. Raman that not everyone knows is that he had nine children, nine. And uh, just one second, I need to adjust the screen. Okay, go back to... Okay, so <clears throat> nine children. And so this is the point that Kay and Rao was making in his Planets and Children book. I mean, how do you see nine children? Uh, eight of these were in his Jupiter Dasha. So let's just say for a moment, you don't work with the divisional charts. If you look at Bibi Raman's natal chart um, with Aquarius Ascendant, uh, 10 degrees, um, not anywhere near, near the cusp. So we're not talking about a cusp issue, but can we describe this event of childbirth? Looking at Jupiter Dasha, Jupiter in the natal chart is in the 10th house, aspected by Mars, the 10th Lord, uh, and aspected by uh, the first Lord. There's no connection with the fifth house Fifth Lord. Jupiter is a karak of childbirth. That could certainly suggest that childbirth could happen in the Jupiter Dasha in a broad sense. Just simply being in the, the Dasha of the uh, of Jupiter 
uh, Jupiter also happens to be the PK in, uh, in the Gymini system, the Putra Karaka. So those are a couple of clues. Uh, but could you say that everyone born with Aquarius ascendant uh, on, on this day, August 8th, 1912, uh, would uh, uh, have nine children? No, we need more detail. We need more specificity. We need more confirmation. And that's what the divisional charts provide. They're a confirmation tool. They help us get uh, a deeper look. It's like we have the macroscopic look at the chart in the natal chart. Then we have the microscopic look. It gives us all kinds of details that we wouldn't have otherwise. So it's a great tool to have. It's a predictive tool, the divisional charts. Uh, and lo and behold, Jupiter is in the fifth house, the relevant house in the D7. And his first child actually was born in Rahu moon. Notice how Jupiter aspects both Rahu and the moon. Uh, Jupiter's a ninth lord. It's above up above house lord in the in the Septemsa chart. This looks very strong uh, confirmation that this is a correct ascendant, that he was born between you know 736 and eight seconds and 750 and 52 seconds. So uh, so Rahu Moon we can explain. Gets the uh, Jupiter gets the aspect to both Rahu and the Moon, um, as the Karaka of childbirth. It's also the Ninth Lord, and and then he starts the the Jupiter Mahadasha, uh, in August of nineteen thirty seven, when he had a second child, and then eight more after that, all in the Jupiter Dasha. So notice here how Jupiter. Look at the four, look at the fourth child, Jupiter Mercury. Notice how in the natal chart, Mercury is the fifth lord. Mercury has no connection with the fifth house in the Septemsa chart, but and this is a point that KN Rao makes that Mercury is a qualifier. It gives the experience of uh, uh, you can give the event of childbirth just just by this the virtue of being the fifth lord in the natal chart. Okay, uh, so if we could go through, he had two children in Jupiter Mercury, um, and Jupiter Venus. Uh, Jupiter Venus was another child. Venus is with Jupiter in the fifth house. Jupiter moon, uh, uh, very similar also. Jupiter uh, is aspecting the moon, uh, just like Rahu moon uh, gave childbirth. Jupiter moon gave childbirth. Jupiter, Ra uh, Jupiter Rahu also gave childbirth. In any case, we can see justification in the Septemsa chart for each of these, uh, for the birth of each of these children. Whereas if we were dependent on acquiring all of our clues to be able to, to make a solid interpretation or make a solid prediction about this person. Um, be, we'd have a tough go of it. We'd have, we've, uh, we'd have a hard time justifying just looking at Jupiter in the natal chart. I mean, obviously this was, this was a career oriented Dasha. I mean, no, uh, no, no wonder. I mean, Jupiter is uh, in the 10th house, aspected by 10th Lord. He, he revived the astrological magazine, um, which his grandfather started. Uh, Mars is the third Lord. We can make good sense of, of uh, this Jupiter Dasha overall. Um, Jupiter is aspected by the moon in the natal chart. Uh, moon, the fourth house, can represent you know, family life, obviously. He had more going on in the Jupiter Dasha than just uh, childbirth. Um, but there was, this is a, 
busy full time. Any case, um, so this is the point that Can Ram made. made. It's ludicrous to try to predict childbirth without working from a divisional chart, getting confirmation in the relevant divisional chart, in this case, the D7 Septumsa chart. Okay. So let me go back to, here are some, this is some quotes by K.N. Rao. Jyotish is a blunt tool without the use of the divisional chart. Sir, so you have to change the screen share. Ah, okay. Thank you. Now we can see it, sir. Okay. Jyotish is a blunt tool without the use of divisional charts. Never assume that the, the birth time is correct. It's another quote. I mean, this is what astrologers do best, in my opinion. We always assume that the birth time is correct. <clears throat> I mean, this is, uh, it's hard work to verify or rectify the birth time. Um, and so to, to take that extra time to verify uh, the, the birth time, this is what he's recommending. Every birth time must prove itself in the cold light of events. The gauge for the adjusting the birth time. So notice how in this example, um, this is the next chart that we're going to be looking at. Um, 406 and 9 seconds to 420 and 42 seconds. Okay. So this person was born right at 420. So that means just one minute later, one minute later, he'd have a different ascendant in the Navamsha. Okay. So this was a situation that I found myself in. So now I need to go back and share screen again. It's still the slide. Yeah. How about now? Yes, now it's fine. Okay. 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 So <clears throat> looking at the D, D9 chart again, the Navamsha. And this, so this is uh, a person that I gave a reading to several years ago. And he had questions about marriage. And he had questions about career. I mean, not surprising. Um, most people, I mean, those are the two bread and butter uh, questions that people have. Um, uh, my, my, uh, my friend Mark Boney likes to say, your money or your honey. They're always interested in their money or their honey. Uh, in any case. Um, so yes, he had a question about marriage. And notice that just one minute later, one minute later, um, 4.20 a.m. But then here's, the, here's the, the real challenge is so this is the Dashamsha chart. Looks, look at the title bar and notice how 4.19 and 15 seconds is, the, is when the, the ascendant in the Dashamsha begins, the D10 chart, and goes to 432. Okay, so you probably realize what, uh, what the, the pickle that I was in. Uh, one minute forward to 421, it changes the ascendant in the Navamsha. One minute back at, to 419 will change the ascendant in the, D, in the Dashamsha. It questions about career 
and marriage. Okay. So I asked him for uh, the date of his marriage. He was married in Saturn Mercury. So I figured, okay, we'll work from his date of marriage. And uh, and if we get this right, then that would just solve. Uh, he's born after, uh, or he's born before 421. If, if Aries ascendant in the Navamsha is correct, then, uh, then we will confirm either way. It'll be either Aries or it will be Taurus. Okay, so just one sec. Okay. So then I want to get the change time tool. All right, there we go. We go one minute forward. 421, notice how the ascendant changes in the Navamsha from Aries to Taurus. He's looking at marriage in, he, he had his marriage in Saturn Mercury. Well, look what happens. All of a sudden, the Mahadasha Lord is aspected by the seventh Lord, Mars, and Saturn itself aspects the seventh house. So then all of a sudden, Saturn, the Mahadasha Lord, has a connection to the seventh house and seventh Lord. Likewise, Mercury is in the seventh house. So, whoa, what happened there? Not sure what all those lines are. Okay, so this one, this one event sure looks like this is correct. Go one one minute forward, at least one minute forward. Uh, then Taurus is sent it. If we go back again to Aries, now see similar situation with my dad. There's no connection uh, with the seventh house. Saturn has no connection with the seventh house or, or seventh Lord or Venus for that matter. Uh, the karaka of, of, of marriage. Likewise, Mercury, no connection with seventh house, seventh Lord. So, <clears throat> so we're adding up clues. We're, we're being like detectives to figure out what is, what is the correct ascendant? I mean, are we going to go one minute forward, or one minute back? One minute forward is what I did. I mean, this was, this this person uh, uh, did not plan to have any verification or, um, of his birth time uh, uh, during the reading. He just wanted to get his questions answered. I mean, like everyone, no, no. I mean, completely reasonable and understandable. Um, but I took I I decided I got to figure this out, and so I collected that event uh, of marriage. I collected job i looked at these um these events and and within 10 or 15 minutes i uh decided that it, he must be born uh after 421 so i just i just used 421 he didn't want to take more time to drill down on the correct ascendant um i mean the correct birth time this was enough to be able to answer the questions i knew the navamsha uh, would very, very likely be correct going forward one minute. And likewise, if that's the case, then the dashamsha would also be correct. 
So 10, 15 minutes, it was resolved. And so this is, this is how we can use uh, the divisional charts to verify or correct the birth time. Okay, so stop this share. Here we are again. So this this is the gauge for adjusting the birth time. Uh, so can everybody see this the slide on right now? Yes, sir. Okay, excellent. <clears throat> so it's another quote by Canrow. When in doubt about the correctness of the horoscope, meaning the correctness of the birth time, verify some indisputable, indisputable events like education, marriage, children, career, and examine, examine it. And examine it with the most popular Vimshotriya Dasha. So... <clears throat> This is this is a, a simple a simple way to approach this. Collect events. This is an event based approach, but it's more than that. Um, so we'll get in a little bit deeper into this method. But first, let's talk about the kinds of birth time problems that people can have. There are six birth time problems that I've been able to identify. A cusp problem, of course, that's going to be your red alert top priority to figure out which ascendant in the natal chart is correct. Uh, if they're born within one uh, minute of the ascendant, either side of the ascendant um, at either one, one degrees or earlier or 29 degrees or later, um, that becomes a really important problem. And if you do the math with that, uh, just people with cusp problems would, would take place in one out of 15 uh, charts. 7% of the time uh, will, as astrologers, face a cusp issue. Uh, so for a full-time astrologer, that could be a couple every couple of weeks um, if they do 10 readings a week. Um, any case, this is, this is the, the, the most serious issue. Uh, and this can be resolved with uh, looking at these events um, at the divisional, with the divisional charts. Um, a rounded birth time. Is, is really why uh, astrology can be so tough. People come to the astrologer with great expectations. They hear about how, how accurate and profound uh, Vedic astrology or Jyotish can be. They have big expectations, but they come with a rounded birth time. Uh, very frustrating. They expect precision, like what we would expect from a classical system. And yet, they come with a, a vague, ambiguous birth time. So this is uh, this is what we have to face. So qu having quick methods to to verify and rectify the birth time uh, becomes really important. Also, a general birth time problem. Um, sometime in the morning, sometime in the afternoon, sometime in the evening. You know, you're looking at a three, four hour, uh, six hour range. Um, also, people have two birth time problems. Uh, they're born. Um, they're born at a particular time. The mother remembers one time. The nurse writes down another time. So then you've got to decide which is correct. Also, uh, a mistakenly recorded birth time problem. This, uh, believe it or not, this happened to my son when he was born. I mean, when he was born in in the winter of of uh, two thousand and eight. Um, February 2008. He was born at 8.46 and 12 seconds. I had it down to the exact second. I had my clock, my watch uh, synchronized to the master observatory uh, clock and the Naval Observatory master clock. And, and in any case, uh, they wrote it down as 10.46 p.m., not 8.46 p.m. Uh, really frustrating. Uh, and then some people just have no birth time at all. So this is what we face. Um, okay. 
He and Ralph says most birth times are between five and 20 minutes off. Uh, so if you if you think about the the cusp problem that happens in one out of you know 15 uh, charts, um, you know statistically, uh, mathematically, um, uh, you know we, one degree takes approximately four minutes um, to to change. Every four minutes, uh, the ascendant is 120 minutes long. Um, so 30 degrees takes about four minutes for one degree. So if the birth times are really between five and 20 minutes off, then birth time problems can happen a lot more frequently than uh, you know one out of 15 charts. Because yeah, it could be a lot more. It's not just cusp issues. Um, and there are many types of problems. Okay, we already said that. So this is interesting. This is a quote in the Briyat Prashahora Shastra. Um, this is a quote about the Shastyamsha. <clears throat> there is no doubt in the destruction of that house whose Lord is in a malefic Dasha. I'm not sure about the, the correctness of that. Let me see. I do have this in my book. Let's get the correct quote. Okay, here it is. There is no doubt in the destruction of the house whose Lord is in a malefic Shasti Amsha, so say, so say Garga and others. So how would you know if the Lord of a house is in a malefic a, a, a malefic shasti is what it says, malefic shasti -amsha. So in other words, a, a malefic house um, in the shasti uh, So the shasti is only two minutes long. So that's evidence from a classic, from the classic Brihat Prasha Hora Shastra, suggesting that traditionally the birth time is, is expected to be within two minutes, correct within two minutes. Then we know. Uh, then we have the correct ascent in the shastyamsha. So we can work with a shastyamsha as the last step. So this is a. This is also uh, an important quote. But I'm going to jump to this point. So going quickly through this method of of finding the correct birth time. Basically, we are correcting the ascendants. It's like, it's like you are an owner of a music store and someone has come, uh, the, 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 the orchestra director has brought all of uh, these instruments for you to tune, seven of them to be exact. And you need to get them all ready in time for uh, the, the classical concert. Get all these instruments tuned. So where do you begin to tune an instrument? We tune, we tune every major divisional chart that can be aligned with a common event. So what are the common events? Um, Ken Rao mentioned that earlier in one of his uh, the quotes that I shared. Education uh, and looking at the the. Uh, the D24, the Siddhamsha or Chaturvim Shamsha, um, career and the D10, Dashamsha, um, marriage, of course, with uh, the Navamsha, childbirth was the Samtamsa, moving, changing home with the Chaturvim Shamsha. And then these, these five uh, divisional charts are hemmed in between uh, the, the natal chart and the Shastyamsha. So if you get the, the ascendant correct in the natal chart, uh, then you will have the, the correct birth time. Um, if you have the correct ascendant in the, in, the, in the natal chart, then you can move on to the Chaturvim Shamsha. So, and then you move on to the, the Saptamsa. Then you move on to the Navamsha. Then you move on to the Dashamsha. 
the Siddhamsha, and then finally the Shastyamsha. So this is this is the funnel method. You start with a wide ascendant of 120 minutes of, of the natal chart. And then, and so if you have the correct ascendant, then you know that the, uh, in the natal chart that is, then you know that you're somewhere in that 120 minute period, you have the correct time. The birth time falls within that. So these divisional charts are like boxes fitting within boxes. You start with a wide ascendant, then going to a, a narrow, a, uh, the next narrow ascendant, the Chattervim, the Chattervim Shamsha, Chattertamsha, that's mis, mis, uh, spelled, Chattertamsha, the D4. Um, that's a 30 minute time range. If we go back to the previous slide, the Chattertamsha, 30 minute time range. You get that correct, then you've all of a sudden reduced the birth time to within 30 minutes. And then you proceed, you get the correct ascendant in the Saptamsa, you get it within 17 minutes, the Navamsha within 13 minutes, the Dashamsha within 12 minutes, and then the Siddhamsha, the Chattavimshamsha uh, within five minutes, and lastly, the Shastyamsha. So this is a journey of what I like to call the journey of precision, how you can start with the wide and work towards the narrow. This is this is uh, this is what I came to present. So we will stop the screen share here. We'll go back and go back to Zoom. If I get back to Zoom. <laughs> Back to Zoom. Not sure. Oh, I know. There we are. Okay, I'm back. How's everybody doing? So, anybody have any questions? People can unmute. For here, uh, do we have time for questions? We have a few minutes. Uh, okay. Whoever has a question uh, could raise their hands. Maybe we can take three or four. Uh, the best would be for them. In other words, best would be for them. Oh, to boy. Uh -oh, I'm not hearing. I'm not understanding you. Uh, Sunilji, uh, can you please repeat? Let them post it in the chat box. Okay. Uh, whoever has uh, a maybe question, a translation. please put them in yeah. the chat and uh, I'll read them out. If anybody has a question, please put it in the chat box uh, and I will read it up. Now, this Monica, is not this. Uh, Swaraj Yadav. Any questions? One question is oh, which oh, software oh, were you using? Astro software. <laughs> yes, um, I use Prashra's Light, and I use uh, and I use Sri Jyoti Star. Um, Prashra's Light uh, has some very nice tools for uh, birth time rectification. So what, the screen that you were seeing that's Prashra's Light. And you can do something very similar in Sri Jyoti Star. So they're both uh, excellent programs. Uh, one more question is, in your book, do you explain the correct use of division? <laughs> this is from... Okay. Do you explain how correct. to directly read the divisionals is what is... Absolutely. Asked. That's... Yes, absolutely. That's the... That's really... Uh, the secondary point about the book is not only to teach a method, a, a practical method for arriving at the correct birth time. But also, uh, that's all well and good. I mean, if you can, if you have a method to get to the correct birth time, but if if you begin to use the divisional charts, then you have, 
you've added uh, a very important tool in, in your Jyotish toolbox. So, uh, so I, for each divisional chart, there are different things to look for. So we have to know where to look and what to look for. So these factors, uh, I mentioned a few, you know, uh, I'll, I'll reel them off. The seven factors that I'm working from. House, house lord, Karaka. Is there a connection with the Dasha lord? Uh, Mahadasha lord, Antar Dasha lord, Pratyantar Dasha lord, with uh, the relevant house, relevant house lord, or the Karaka. So those are the big hitters. Those are the those are the most important, the most basic um, points that we need to, or factors that we need to hone in on. But then also, um, we mentioned. I also mentioned how uh, the Mahadasha Lord in the the ascendant of a relevant division of the relevant divisional chart that for that event that becomes another very important factor. Then uh, also, I mentioned uh, still another. I mentioned all of them actually in this in this class itself. Um, how <clears throat> when you're running a dasha uh, of the relevant house lord it, uh, in the natal chart, you're running, you're looking at the that alone can give the event. So, uh, in reference to B.V. Raman's chart, Mercury is was the fifth lord in the Septumsa. It has no connection with the fifth house, fifth lord, or Jupiter in the Septumsa, but it didn't need to. It's already a qualifier for uh, childbirth, just simply on the virtue of being the, the relevant house lord in the natal chart. So that's the, the fifth clue that we are, our fifth factor, you could say, um, predictive factor that we're looking at. And then the sixth factor is Bhavat Bhavam. So not only the for childbirth, we not only looked at the fifth house, we looked at the ninth house, the fifth house from the fifth house. Um, there are other factors, but uh, what we're really, there are the factors to use, like say, if you're running a dasha, mahadasha, antradasha of planets that are in mutual aspect, in some bandha in a varga chart, that can bring an event. But, uh, I didn't use that in the book. I first, in my first edition of the book, I, I used it, but then I realized this is not, this is going to be too confusing for people because, or, or irrelevant because it doesn't help one decide on the ascendant if two planets are in mutual aspect. That's going to, they'll be in mutual aspect regardless of the ascendant. And so it doesn't help us arrive at the goal. Um, you know, as I, I wanted a quick method, I, I wanted to present what I saw Kan Rao doing um, and and help people uh, get get um, get the understanding of how to use a tangible method that can get the job done quickly because we can't take uh, we can't take a lot of time for this uh, or else. Uh, you're going to be looking, uh, I mean, if we're doing this as part of a reading, then it's got to be especially quick, 10, 15 minutes. So we have to be able to have the tools, the, the methods, um, the quick, uh, quick, quick tools to work from to find the correct birth time. Um, if people have, if they're, if they're uh, paying for a birth time rectification, yeah, then it can be a longer process. And we can look at all seven of these divisional charts uh, that I that we looked at in the funnel method. And we can get all the way down to the Shastyamsha. Um, okay, I don't know if that really addressed your question, but I'm happy to stick around for more questions if you're interested. Another if, question. It's okay uh, with do we check the first, fifth, and ninth houses in D9 in regards to the person's skill to rectify the time? Person's skill. Skill? Yeah, that's the question from uh, Kiran Preet uh, Sharma. Well, maybe, maybe he means education. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Kiran Preet Ji, can you please uh, type? Education, I would use I would use uh, the, the Siddhamsha, the Chadavimshamsha. The fifth and ninth house in the the Sid, 
Siddhamsha. These are the Vidya Bhavas. Another question is, Prashant do you uh, recommend reading the D9 chart independently? Uh, I mean, that's not really a birth time rectification question. It's more of an interpretation question. I mean, um, independently, uh, not independently. <clears throat> I use it conjointly with the natal chart. I recommend using the divisional charts conjointly. So there's one question uh, from Swaraj. What happened to Korea for the case where D9 and D10 were both off by one minute? You corrected D9, but was that okay for the D10 as well? Well, it had to be because uh, the D10 changed at 419. Let's see, 419. So one minute forward changed. So it had to be after 421. So, so that solved uh, the, the D10 question. All the events have to be correct. So we can look at that event uh, in the D10, the event that he gave me, and we'd see that we that it gives strong confirmation as well. But I focused uh, primarily on marriage. One, uh, one reason is because I knew he'd know the exact date of his marriage. Uh, so we want exact dates uh, to the day if possible. So uh, marriage, childbirth is, are really great events in that sense for birth time rectification. Uh, the question is, any tips for rectifying up to the D60? Up to? Yes, what do, up what do you, to. Uh, what, what do you mean by up to? Accuracy up to Sashti Amsha. That's the question. It's not my question, sir. Yeah. It's Jan. Yeah. Well, yeah. I would say before. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Let me just share my screen. Oh, sorry, he's, oh, he is uh, clarified. How to identify the D60? I think uh, maybe he means ascendant. I can't get his question. Yes. He wants to know how do you confirm it's the right ascendant of D60 when you're doing rectification? Very good question. Are you seeing this again here? Are you seeing? Yes, uh, the slide. Uh, the slide, okay. Yes. So, <clears throat> The premise with this method is that we don't go the, we don't go on to the next divisional chart. In other words, we don't look at the D60 until we've confirmed the D24 or the D10. In other words, if someone if someone knew that their birth time is within an hour, let's just say. That would mean 30 ascendants in the Shastyamsha. 30. Why? Because two minutes, um, two, in one hour, a 60 minute window of time, there are 30 different Shastyamshas, ascendants. Um, likewise, um, in one hour of the Siddhamsha, um, uh, so this is a five minute a five minute time range for each ascendant, five minutes. So that would be six different uh, ascendants in a one hour time span in the Siddhamsha. So <clears throat> if we get the Siddhamsha right, then we're, we're, we have narrowed the birth time down to a five minute time range. So then we're only in the Shastyamsha, we're only looking at one or two ascendants. Then you decide on which one, which one, two or three ascendants in the Shastyamsha must, it must be. I mean, of course, uh, this is a thorough method. So this takes time. This could take one or two hours to, to, to uh, uh, get to the, to get to the Shastyamsha because it takes a lot of, a lot of work. I mean, it gets quicker with practice and uh, uh, but yeah, it's, um, you know, maybe 
about 10 minutes for each um, divisional chart at the least. So to um, make sure that they're correct. So <clears throat> how do we decide? I think we decide uh, by using a, an intelligent method, which this is. In other words, um, the D7, the D7, that means that there are in, that there are seven possible ascendants in a two hour time range, the D7. That's too many, seven. I mean, if you're looking at a two hour time range, uh, that's, that's a lot to consider seven different ascendants um, in a two hour window. That's why an earlier divisional chart uh, with a wider time range for the ascendant, um, like the chart of Imshamsha, which is a, a 30 minute time range. So let me just pull up that chart again. 30 minute time range. Um, it's much more manageable in a one hour uh, or a two hour period. There are only four Chattervim, Chattertamshas, only four. That's manageable. Three or four, uh, that, that's, uh, that's manageable. We can do that. But to have to consider, um, so, th so this is a time saving device um, using this progressive uh, method of the ascendants. This is this makes it practical. It's a shortcut method. Okay? So I I think that may um help explain that. Is that uh, Yes, sir. We have covered the questions. We covered the questions. Okay. Super. Okay, wait. Let me Sanilji? back to oh. last question about it. Last, uh, we have already covered the questions, uh, okay. whatever is re uh, relevant to the topic. Ah. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, oh, my pleasure. It's really, really... Oh, it's, it's, it's really a pleasure and an honor to, to... what well, Sunil, to see you in person is, that uh, just made my day. <laughs> and, and to support, uh, you know, uh, your guru's work. And you support your work. Uh, well, this is, uh, I'm just thrilled to be here. And uh, I look Thank forward you. to the next next one. This is uh, just, just fantastic. I think, I think we're ready. We're ready. Uh, I think in the next, the last 10 years, um, Sunil, uh, your work and others' work has really advanced Vedic astrology forward. Um, it's in, it's incredible. That's very kind of you to say that. Sir. Very kind of you. Thank you so much, Paul uh, uh, Mahaniji. Uh, and wonderful to have you from Hawaii, a beautiful place. Uh, everybody should visit. And My study, pleasure. Study under Mr. Paul Mahaniji. And I have earlier at the start of this lecture, I shared the link of his book that you can buy from Amazon. Okay. The Kindle version is also available. Okay. So you get it on Amazon uh, dot in also you get it. Okay. So that's about it. I appreciate the audience asking very good questions and I'm very happy that uh, people have seen today how we can rectify both time and this is the best method which is two events. Anyway, we'll finish this session. Thank you so much. Girish, uh, mm -hmm. can you stop recording and restart it, please? <laughs> yes, sir. I'm, I'm stopping. Proceed.